Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of Sunderland Board of Selectmen. It's May 8th. Call to order at 735. The first order of business we have is the reorg. What's that? 635. 635. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, almost close. Uh, first order of business is reorganization of the board. I'd like to turn the uh, meeting over to Cherry. Cherry, it's your meeting. Thank you. I'll You're accept welcome. nominations for chair. Uh, nominate right. Dave Pierce. Second. You going to close the nominations now? Uh, any other nominations? I don't hear none. You, Scott? <laughs> I don't know. I'll close the nominations. Thanks. All, All in favor? favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Sounds like 3-0 to me. Yeah. Uh, take <laughs> nominations for vice chair? Scott Bergeron. Second. That was good. All right. <laughs> well, the clerk is the only thing that... The clerk has to work. That's a good point. That's true. You have to read stuff and everything. Yeah. The clerk All has to work. Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Nominations for clerk? Scott Bergeron. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nominated Tom Biden Kevin. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sherry's tallying up the uh, votes right now. She'll let us know in a second what the results were. Okay. I think we need a recount. For Chairman David Pierce. Congratulations, David. For Vice Thank Chair you. Scott Bergeron. I think it's my penance. Yeah. 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 All right. <clears throat> that it? That it? That's it. You want me to take the past practice doing the last meeting there, Mr. David? Yeah. No. Okay. All right, so first order of business is board or reorganization. Sherry, you did a wonderful <coughs> job. Yes. Uh, um, David, good luck. <laughs> uh, we have a 6.30 appointment with the Energy Committee. Energy Committee, front and center, please. They're right behind you, Aaron, about four rows. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Hi, Aaron. As you probably know, I'm Aaron gotcha. And to my left is Scott Reed, the chair of the committee, and then the former chair, Laura Williams. This is the sum total of the energy committee. We're down to three members. Mm -hmm. So Scott are you Reed. recruiting at this point as well? Twelve years ago with seven members, which means that nice. we would love anyone who's a resident of Sunderland who has any concerns or interest in matters pertaining to energy to approach us so that we can uh, enlarge our ranks. We do a lot as a committee, but we do even more with some more personnel. So that would help. If this is something that is of interest to you, please come forward and contact us. We won't take very much of your time tonight because we know we have a lot of important business yet ahead. We're here just to give you an update about what we've been up to and also our future plans. I think the last time we appeared before the board, we were just proposing our door-to-door tenancy project. And I'm, I'm pleased to report to you that it was a resounding success. We knocked on a total of 1,281 doors in Sunderland. We had 636 conversations with the residents, and we scheduled an unbelievable 136 audits. Nice. We good. referred 100 other people to Mass Save and 64 people to Community Action, which is the low income uh, version of Mass Save. Excellent. Nice job. So this was good work. something mm. that. Um, was beyond our expectations of, of, in terms of results and the um, co-op power as well as the people at Community Action were very, very happy with the results and improved a lot of properties here in Sunderland. We were more energy efficient, we were more green than we were before we started knocking on doors. So that's good news. Um, <clears throat> the other thing we've been involved in doing is spending down <coughs> the remainder of our designation grant for the Green Communities Program. You might remember we received $146,000 as a designation grant after we satisfied the five criteria. And uh, in order to apply for further funding, we had to spend all that money down. And what we did is uh, we had a number of projects with uh, 
Guardian Energy Management Solutions, as well as Bales Energy Associates. Um, we um, <clears throat> did a lot of work on the, uh, this building, actually, the, uh, and as well as the public safety complex, the building envelope and insulation issues were uh, addressed there. At the public library, we installed new thermostats, which are fully programmable and networked together. Oh, brilliant. So hmm. that we can allot for days that the library is closed due to vacation, or Thursdays and Sundays, and um, <coughs> that's certainly going to save energy right there and there. We installed um, dissolved oxygen sensors as well as ORP sensors, oxidation reduction potential sensors, which made the plant much more efficient. <coughs> we met with uh, Mr. Gabriel and Mr. Brindo, who said that the plant has never worked better than it does now, so they were very, very happy with those modifications. Um, and then that basically did zero out our, our uh, designation grant. And so we were able to apply for what's called the competitive round of uh, green community funding. That means we're competing with other towns who already have been designated as green communities. In order to do that, however, not only did we have to spend down our initial grant, but we had to achieve the 20% energy reduction in terms of municipal energy expenditure. And we're pleased to report that not only did we achieve that, we achieved something like 23% nice. the last calculations that we did on municipal energy. So, so how much you reduce it by? Sorry? 23%. We needed to um, achieve a 20% reduction from our base year, which I believe was 2011. Mm -hmm. And we achieved that and, and then some. We have to hold on to that. Sure. I mean, that's it's challenging because things change, the money changes. And, we have to make sure that we keep that, but we did achieve that benchmark, so that entitles us to apply for further green community funding, which we have done with the help of our town manager, Sherry Patch, who is a great help. You know that, but that's together. an amazing thing, Aaron. That, that's the type of things that, I mean, we, we don't have a weekly, monthly newspaper, but those are things, if you could, I, I mean, I think we should talk to... to to, to Sherry or Cindy, whoever does the web page, and get get that information out there because that's that's a commendable thing. And sometimes people don't they don't see that that type of you know the things that that are being done to save that money. You know they they see you get some money, but they don't realize what you're doing with it. So may, maybe we can talk to them about you know let's use a little trumpet and bugles on that. Okay. So we can for the new competitive grant. The work that we propose to have done if we get the grant, which is about $200,000, so it's a little bit more than the designation grant. We propose for the Central Elementary School to, in, to install what's called demand control ventilators for the cafeteria, um, which includes carbon dioxide sensors and basically uh, controls the ventilation system um, as needed for the occupancy levels when the cafeteria is empty, the motors can be slower, or it's full, it should, it should bring the levels of use of fresh air. Right now, it's just going at one speed all the full time. Yeah. So that's a waste of energy. Um, for this building, town office building, we're going to replace the control valves and steam traps, which are malfunctioning, they're old, with, um, with uh, uh, their pneumatic controls in this building. We're going to replace them with 28 thermostatic control valves, which each zone will be fully programmable, depending again on the occupancy of different parts of the building, and to make sure that people are at the right temperature and comfortable sure. as the building is, is old and not all the parts of the building function insulation-wise. Uh, we did have insulation work done, and there's also some mechanical insulation that needs to be done um, with the pipes and the fittings upon the pipes that are exposed right now and they're, they're losing energy. Um, also in this building, thanks to the work done by Laura Williams, we will insert, we will install window inserts, oh, nice. which um, mm -hmm. will increase the R value of each window by an R2, which is a substantial amount for a price that's much, much less than installing replacement windows. Uh, we've also done these types of window insert workshops for homeowners here in Sunderland. We've been very successful. I think we have another half dozen people this time. 
and Sunderland residents, you have your choice of paying between $15 and $20 for a window insert or $400 or more for a replacement window. It's, sure. it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Uh, I have them in, for, for my apartment where I live and they make a huge difference. I think most yeah. of the other I think more committee members have installed them at home. Nice. But we can do that for this building. We've, um, <coughs> we've both contacted a, a company called ARC who specializes in making custom-made window inserts. And this, that, if we get the funding, that should make this uh, building much more energy efficient and much more comfortable to work in. For sure. Um, for the public safety complex, um, we're going to install an energy recovery unit. This is something we already have in other buildings, such as the library. Uh, when you get fresh air in, you have to cycle out the air conditioned air, the heated or cooled air. And what the energy recovery unit does, it decaptures some of that heat, heat. or yeah. heat temperature um, through <coughs> essentially a heat exchanger type of thing. Um, so we're recapturing the energy used to heat the air in the first place and not just sending it out the window. Uh, thereby, the fresh air gets slightly warmed by the exhaust air. And I think that's about it. That's the sum total of our $200,000 competitive grant that we applied for at the end of March. And we'll be hearing the results of that application in the middle of July. Hopefully we will be awarded that grant. And then we can make these further improvements. Um, I should say the other plans we have is to continue our canvassing program, but with um, special eye towards trying to address the energy issues of the rental units in town. Sunderland, mm -hmm. as I'm sure you know, is unique among many towns and cities in the Commonwealth because we have a very high percentage of people who live in apartments. And that's a little bit of a trickier program. It's not a question of just knocking on one door. Um, often the larger apartment complexes are owned by <coughs> uh, entities that are out of state. Mm -hmm. and, um, but the advantage is that uh, if 50% of the people who live in those apartment complexes qualify as low income, then all the weatherization work will be done for free by hmm. community action. But it's a matter of compiling the income uh, the data and approaching the landlords. The other difficulty is that hmm. in many cases, the landlords themselves don't pay for the, um, the, energy. the utilities, right. and the energy. So the financial incentive for them to do that is not there. So that's something we need to address. And we have some ideas and we're talking to some people about the best way to do that. So there, it's, it's a trickier issue. It's not as straightforward as the canvassing did already. But since so many people in Sunderland live in apartments, it's something we need to address. And we're going to see if we can do that over the next while. So that's, that's basically what we've been up to and what we hope to do over the next while. Have any questions? So, Sherry, talk to you about mm -hmm. our uh, the street lights that go into the LEDs. So, you, you guys are on board with that as well? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's a question we have to own the street lights first before right. we can qualify for that program. And Sherry's investigating that and we hope that will work for, for the town and all the other financial okay. issues you have to deal with. Well, actually, that was appropriated out of capital stabilization this year. So the ownership piece is already taken care of, or will be taken care of after July 1st. And we already have a, a bucket truck that we share with other towns. Mm -hmm. and we'll maintenance on the street lights if necessary, though right. it should last a good long time. But you know, it's exactly. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. It's great work, right? Good work. Thanks. Thanks. David, you're a hard working group. Yeah. Actually, just one quick question: the the controls you're putting in here, does that the uh, for the thermostatic valves? That's on each of the units like that over there. Yes. Does it require any additional controls, or do we need to do any modernization at some point to the other controls in the facility? I think it supersedes the existing control system. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the price tag on that is fifty-four thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Right. Right. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.
Okay, minutes uh, 424, 428, and 5-1. Start off with uh, 424. Uh, move the minutes as presented. Uh, second. All those in favor of the minutes from April 24th, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, 428. Um, motion on the. We have a motion on 428. Second. 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 Motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. 3 0 Sherry and May 1st. Motion. A motion made. Uh, second. And seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. We're all set with that. We'll go past uh, updates right now, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, new business, Chapter 61A, right of first refusal for piece of property on Falls Road for Irene and Paul Yurkovich. Um, so we have a pro we have a process basically. Uh, we received a letter. David, do you want to give the high points of the letter? <clears throat> uh, we've got a letter here. This one's from the planning board. Um, well, no, from, from, the 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 from the lawyer. Oh, I have the letter. Oh, yeah, that's it. Just the, the first paragraph. Yeah. Um, this is to the board. I write to you as counsel for Irene Yurkovitz and Paul Yurkovitz, with respect to a parcel of land situated on the easterly side of Falls Road, is shown as 2.027 acres to be conveyed on a plan of land in Sunderland, Massachusetts, surveyed for Irene Yurkovitz and Paul Yurkovitz. Dated April 11, 2015, by Mary Ann Maluski, PLS, recorded in Franklin Registry of Deeds, Plan Book 138, page 35, a copy of which is attached hereto as Exhibit A and incorporated herein by the references, the Thank premises. All right, so, so basically there's a parcel of land on, on Falls Road that uh, is being taken out of uh, 61A, being sold uh, two, approximately two acres for a house lot. We have a procedure that we have to follow for removal of property from 61A. First is that we receive a registered letter from the client's attorney requesting the property be taken out. We have received that. Second is we forward it to the assessors and they do their back tax calculation, which, which has been done. Correct, Sherry? Yes. Then, then we, we forward to the Agricultural Commission. Um, and in this case, we that's kind of a combination. We don't really have an agricultural commission per se any longer. Uh, we have consultants. Um, so we do have letters from the conservation uh, commission stating that it is not, the, the parcel is too small and doesn't warrant uh, trying to maintain it in 61. So they, they are saying they do not have um, a problem with that. So I think we uh, have gone through all of our checks and balances on that. Um, we are, it is on the uh, selectman's agenda, the register removal, the back taxes, the purchase and sale agreement. There, we, we see in here where it's under, uh, offer has been made and accepted to purchase the land. Um, so we have to discuss if we want to do the right of first refusal. Mr. Bergeron, Mr. Pierce, anybody have any thoughts, Opp opposition, concerns, Bruce? They're still on the critical resource area, right? So that has to be put a plan for it? That, the yeah, they, they, it would still, if it's still in the critical resource, they would have to go to the planning board. They'd have to follow all the zoning bylaws. Uh, in, in, it is a small piece of land, yeah. it's probably not that viable. It's not connected. To, typically, you look at something that's connected to Across another piece street, of APR. Or, or, yeah. Yeah. Right. East of it, nothing. Right. It backs up against that shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, not much you can get out of that. No. The, um, our. What's back taxes? How much is back taxes? I don't have that. Do, did you have that? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have that, Bruce. It's the rollback. Yeah, yeah, the assessors are counting. We can fit, we'll we'll uh, Sherry will have that. We'll 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 find out what that is. I know that uh, they do have to pay. I actually I should have asked the assessors. I was down there before the meeting, but I forgot to. 
So, any other questions about that parcel of land? All right, David, uh, Scott, you have any thoughts? Yeah, we have a recommendation from both the uh, Chair of the Planning Committee as well as the Conservation Commission to yeah. not exercise our option on this. I take their guidance on that. It's not it's not contiguous with anything, and it looks like, by the way, it's being parceled out. It'll be two acres landlocked by three houses. All right. Yeah, I would agree. <clears throat> okay, I'll entertain a motion to... Uh, to uh, not exercise our right of first refusal on this piece of property. Second. So we have a motion made and seconded not to exercise our option of first refusal on this piece of property that was described earlier by David. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 3-0, please. <clears throat> Next up, um, appointment of summer help. Yes, David. we have a letter here <clears throat> from the Highway Department. Please appoint, and this is dated 5-8. Please appoint Nick York and Trent Borbeau as summer help for the Highway Department. The rate of pay will be $13.70 per hour. Nick York has worked for us as summer help in prior years, and that's from George Emery, Highway Superintendent. Okay. Note to appoint two summer help for the Highway Department at the whopping salary of thirteen dollars and seventy cents we're making millionaires in the town of Sunderland. Yep. Motion. Not non benefited. <laughs> <laughs> Second. All those in favor of appointment of Nick and Trent, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, we got two summer helps. Um okay, back to uh public comment. Anybody want public comment? No comment. What's that? Uh, it is public random, comment. Random comment. <laughs> yeah. Random comment? Oh, I'll, I'll randomly comment. Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, you know, proposition Correct. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, this is a proposition to have to the overview. Yeah. So, when we held each line for discussion mm -hmm. at the town meeting, mm -hmm. um, everything was explained clearly, except for the school budget. There was no backup material at the table saying what hundred and twenty-four thousand was one hundred and twenty-five thousand request was. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like somehow for that information. Um, okay. And at one point, someone brought up that the numbers didn't add up. That on one, sure. one budget page, it mm -hmm. was this number, but the article wasn't that number. Well, Part of the article wasn't that number. If, if I could, Mr. Chair. So Scott's got this. It was very confusing. Sure. It was. So my question is, Long ago and far away, when I was on the school committee, something, I think we did the same thing, and it didn't, and the override didn't pass. Is there another opportunity to present the town with a revised budget for just essential services? The budget that was presented, where we went through every line, Mm -hmm. And everybody was happy with everything except a little more, a lot more information on the school. And just essential services. And not any extra funds for whatever that extra $100,000 was for. Is that the, the extra ex money that was paying on? Okay. Was that the extra money? for parade and the 300th anniversary, which is the big question around town. Okay. So, I, I, I want... would like to jump in? No, I'm well, so actually, I think, Scott, Scott, you you actually had a couple questions. Yes. I had a few. Right. Sure. So I'd like to answer the first question, and Scott can answer, because Scott, Scott did a lot of work on, on the, on the um, spreadsheet, okay. and Scott... 
Sure. If I could, the warrant article itself was correct, meaning the motion and the article all lined up. Question from the floor at town meeting was about the balance and use of cash, the handout. Oh, okay. And it was not about the warrant article, oh, okay. and it wasn't about the linearity of the of the the handout sheet handed. It was the fact that the twenty eight thousand for OPEB specifically was about OPEB wasn't captured in here as a use of free cash. It was captured as part of the omnibus budget. So that that was the line of questioning. We went back immediately afterwards and said, "Well, wait a second. We we have to have a balanced budget. We have to have a motion, and all the numbers have to be from the right buckets to land in the right buckets." That happened. The question was actually about the one handout, which was kind of the backstory about what money is going to be left, what money we started with. So that's that. That's the first part. Did that, that did that exp answer your question? So if you, if you looked at that part, the whereas is comes from twenty eight dot 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 dot. That was all legit. That's what we actually voted on. The question about them not adding up was its lack of inclusion in the free cash, which was the record here. It's it's germane to the topic but it's not impacting if, if this free cash number was twenty eight thousand dollars less it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a discussion that's all and that was that was important to bear in mind there was an error on this page yes I added it up, yeah it was, it was a formula i could tell mm -hmm. much right off the bat so it was a cell yeah. numbers were correct. correct i was headed there next batting i appreciate mm -hmm. that we we had we went through a fair amount of consternation because if you went from top down on the right hand column there was a formula error, but if you went from prior year to the current year and looked at the difference okay. of what we were asking for, the 300,040, whatever it was, that was absolutely correct. And again, was in the framework of the question. So those two things, one, a backing piece of information, not really helpful to this, but helpful to what we started with and what we end up with, missed the 28,000 for OPEB, specifically for OPEB. And then this sheet where we go from all of these pages to the top sheet, messed in one formula in the far right column. So if you went down from top to bottom by category, the number was like 14,000 higher, I think. If you went from prior year to current year, spot on, lined up with the article, and lined up with the motion, it was just, it was two pieces of, two pieces of, of formulaic work. One piece of formulaic work and one oversight on our part. So from the spending, from the town meeting's business point of view, we're right on. We don't have to revisit them. Now, if I could, Mr. Chair, extrapolate. If, if we want to go back to, we are going to have to have a revisit of the budget in total. It's important to bear in mind, I want to make sure to get your, your question framed right. There's revisiting the budget in total, which is what we're, we have opportunity to do. We can't carve out a piece that, that doesn't seem like it's as, as uninformed or as not clear information as we would in any other element of it, right? So we have to visit the entire budget, not just one set of lines inside of it, both on the expense side, but also where we plan to appropriate the monies to pay for it from. So it has to be a whole budget review all over again. And that, I think that that's driving a bit to your point, Stan, about having some uh, clarity uh, with respect to the information when we go back here in mm, second week of June. So, so that be a special town meeting? has to be a special mm -hmm. town meeting. Yeah. Which we've done in the past. Yep. Yeah. 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 Right now we have a balance, a budget that's out of balance. Right. So yeah. it has to be brought back forward to town meeting, which is the only appropriating body right. that can actually put it back in balance. Now, I'm not, now, having talked to go around town. Yeah. And please don't misunderstand me. Yeah. No, I just want to help clarify. Um, it would be a really good idea to say we have to, you know, we have to hire these many people because our enrollment is up. We have to do this. We have to do right. that. So, can I? Because I, cause I, well, I think let me get back to them answering my questions first. Okay. Thank you. I think I think with respect to with respect to the inputs and the outputs of the budget, we're going to discuss that starting tonight going forward. We have to develop a special town meeting warrant. We have a draft in front of us already, and identified as the selectmen have historically with the consult of the finance committee. Where do those where, where where do the revenues come from, and what's sustainable? What's repeatable in the upcoming year? How do we not create a bigger gap going forward? 
that's going to be part of our discussion. The quality of the information, I think, that has to be brought forward, maybe a little, in areas of be a straight repeats, because there's a fair amount of expense inside the operating budget that I don't know where you're gonna, we're going to make those reductions. We're going to start tonight, but where there needs to be clarity, uh, I think there needs to be crystal clarity. people do to support and make suggestions for you know this budget review sure yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I would be posted go ahead I, I, I you know it, it, it's interesting because um, we strive to, to do a lot of information right now now the, the schools as in, in standards this is more for general except for you because you've been on the school committee but the school committee has budget hearings and and the school committee they they come to they make a presentation between the board of selectmen to the finance committee they have their public hearings um typically the only ones that go to the school committee budget hearings maybe a selectman or two um, maybe a finance committee member they're, they're not very well attended that's probably if I would say that that's usually the best place to get the information because that's usually the the best dialogue because you're actually talking to the principal the business manager the superintendent and the school committee all, all together in one one location and it, and and to tell you the truth when you get to town meeting sometimes discussing this any part of the budget sometimes gets difficult a because the acoustics is hard to hear but also because sometimes we we don't ask does that answer your question we we, we at you know somebody will say have an answer but we never go back to the person and say does does that satisfy your question but but you know you ask about revisiting i had a, a, a very interesting conversation with a gentleman that was voting no um and he, and he he was voting no because the last time we had the the in 2009 we had the override question he said you selectmen me Scott yeah and I wasn't on them actually Mike yeah. Wisman <laughs> no I didn't mean to like that you me. you no, you, like, you, you, like, you, no, you hey. selectmen yeah. you stopped guys. our trash service oh, six right. yes. months before we even voted on it. <laughs> and, 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 I'm, and I'm sitting there, and, and I am getting older, but I, I'm pretty sure we didn't do that. We wouldn't do that. We couldn't do that. Um, but I said, I don't think we did. Yeah, we didn't. I, I and, vote and, that. and so I asked to if we, our secretary, if they could pull something out of our records. And in and, and here, we sent a letter to Allied Waste on August 3rd, which is... Two May, months after. June, July, August, after. two, three months afterwards, saying that because of the budget, we, we um, came to expect outstandingly friendly service from you guys, but basically we're, our last curbside collection date pickup will be September 2nd, 2009. Now that's, what, five, five months after the election? After the election. But... No matter what I said, no matter what this piece of paper says, that individual believes that we, and will always believe that we stopped trash pickup six months before we even voted. So it, it's hard, and, and I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how, and what we can do besides having an honest. And the other thing that I heard and read in the newspaper is that we tried to keep it quiet this time. Oh yes. Well, my own personal <laughs> opinion is the last time we had we had the override question, we we had a bunch of people with sign. We had people that were doing the best they could. They had signs up, both pro and con. And and you know what I saw? I saw neighbors that wouldn't talk to one another. Mm. I saw mm. neighbors that were going to door to door to get doors slammed in their face for on either side. I didn't I didn't think that was the best. I I didn't want to see that happen in our town. I wanted. To have an honest, if people want to talk about it, have an honest discussion about it, and and hopefully at that point, um, and, and and that's all we could do. We, I personally wasn't going to go out 
and, and put signs up and stuff like that because I, I didn't want to see, again, the, the door slamming and faces and stuff. Lauren? Well, I got to say, I think those of us who have been sitting in this room um, and who have been people who go to the hearings and are involved in the hearings and are kind of on the inside of the budget process might have an idea of uh, why an override is necessary and buy into it. But I, I've got to say, I think that the, we probably and maybe at the special town meeting in the future, make a better, more explicit case for what is at stake and what the state of the budget is, what the sources of the money are. I think people just don't, you know, are, most people, even the people who bother to come to the town meeting, don't really pay attention to a lot of those until they get there. And we need to really do a better job because those people are then the emissary out to, uh, to the vote. And we also need to get some really good press coverage. So I don't think that the case was ever made, you know, I'm not sure the message got out there clearly about what was at stake. And I'm not, I'm not saying that, I'm just, you know, I've been sitting here like you have for the last many, many weeks. So I'm not saying that, the, I'm saying that it's a criticism for all of us going forward. You know, how, how can we do a better job of explaining to people what's at stake and how we, that's the situation we are and why we need more money. So can I just add one more? Because I have no idea. Um, can we do another request for an override at special town meeting? I mean, that can be held in another election. How do you do that? Because people have said we would have done it if there were other things not in that budget. And, and if I could, Mr. Chair, we also heard when it was a $789,000 reduction to the budget in three specific areas, Gen <laughs> general government, elementary school, we thought you guys were kidding. We heard that more than once. I had no idea. We thought you were kidding. Really? What part of the budget process in a municipal, this isn't politics now, this is governance, right? What part of a nine month long process are we not supposed to take with some measure of seriousness? It's all a joke, I don't buy that. We do our level best to present the best possible numbers in the interest of a community of 3,500 people. And if taxpayers say, we're not gonna pay for that, we make those reductions. So to your step, I think, not to your comment, I'm getting a, you know, I'm getting a little yes. animated, but no, okay. it's like, no, yeah, I, did, I didn't know it was about that, that's nonsense. If you didn't know about that, you didn't take the time to actually seek that information out. If you didn't think we were serious, then you shouldn't elect us. Because we're always serious, right? And now we'll talk about $63,000 worth of reductions. That said, the mechanism that's employed would be to call for a special town election, which costs money, and a special town meeting, which costs money, to maybe to throw somebody against the wall to exercise some animus about $105,000 spent on the 300 celebration, which I'm not done talking about. Okay, but it still doesn't affect our operating budget. So I guess my answer to that would be, we we can. I I would say that we're we we need to work over the next uh, few weeks with the finance committee, the school committee, our, our library trustees, uh, everybody, the town side, and and look at the budget and see where 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 we can maybe squeeze a few more pennies out. Like a a, a quick thing is that. On, on the town side, we have in fourteen, fifteen thousand, eighteen thousand dollars on on the um, um, having two family um, added system. to the added to the health care program. So we <clears throat> add, you know, just in case we have new employees that take the health plan for the family, we actually budgeted that versus just going to the dollar for dollar. Now our treasurer would say that's a prudent thing to do. We thought this year was a prudent thing to do so that if we did have something like that happen, we didn't have to go back to a special town meeting to cover those expenses. We can cut, we can eliminate those, that $18,000. We may, that, that may come up, again, the conversations that, that we're gonna have to have. That's something that we may, may be able to do. We may, we may be able to, we'll talk to the schools 
um, elementary school because Frontier budgets pass in the other community. So now it's really it's just us. It's our our community, right. and we'll talk to, like like you said. We'll talk to the school committee, the principal, um, business managers, and we'll see what what's available, and and maybe maybe we can get through this year with with a lesser amount of available funds for next year, and maybe we need a year to to educate a better education maybe but that's what we're going to talk about the next the next few weeks Did that help on that Thank that so i think we bruce just another thing to clarify thing the warrant articles are completely separate from the operating budget article. for instance the hundred five thousand dollars for the anniversary that has nothing to do with the operating budget that's a separate warrant article is is you know the capital expenditure stuff that's a done deal. And I think it's very difficult to revisit that because it could you be. To, you have to redo the whole warrant, you have to do a lot of other things, and, and I believe you have to make a motion to reconsider it, but the meeting's already closed. I mean, there's a procedural thing, but it, it, and that's where a lot of confusion was. People thought if they voted against the override, the parade money was gone, but that's not true. The parade, I'm not saying the parade money, the anniversary money is still there. You, you see where I'm coming from? Well, the and, and that's, that's a one time expenditure out of free cash. And the other point that I want to bring up if you go back and look at the previous elections, I thought this election was a very poor turnout for an overall. Well, that was actually the point I've been waiting to bring up. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, mm -hmm. there were there were 235 yes and 272 no's. If you go back to uh, 2009, there was 775 yeses and 565 uh, no 775 no's and, and 565 yeses. That has about that that turnout of voters that aren't you know apartment dwellers, you know, whatever. That that had to be up to like 75 or 80 percent. And if, if you go back to the 93 override, it was 440 yeses and there were only 324 no's. And I mean... Which year was that? That was in 90, 93. That's the 93. $350,000. Okay. And, and it's a matter of who gets to the polls and, and gets their people to the polls. All right. This the yeah. turnout in this, and this is kind of one of the things I want to bring up about what you were saying, Lauren. I agree with some of the points, but I think the biggest thing was th whether it's apathy or busy schedules. I don't know what, but we're talking about it was under, I believe, twenty five percent of eligible voters yes. turning out. So I think a lot of this, you know, a lot of the question goes back to the townspeople. Where were you on voting day? I mean, we're talking. You know, you sit, let's say for sake of argument, it's 25% of the eligible voters. So that means that 75% of the eligible voters didn't show up. And you can't tell me that of those 75% of the voters, they don't have some opinion, whether it's pro or against the override or whatever. But 75% did not show up. This kind of apathy is one of the reasons why when you extrapolate that up to the level of Washington that we're in the situation we're in. And, 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 I, it's, and, and I think, you know, the people who voted, no, I respect them. They, you know, they voted, and, and they were yeah. there. And I mean, we have to honor their vote, I think. And, well, well that, that's the risk. The budget now. That's the risk of mechanically you could bring another vote, but that's the risk of doing it is then, you, then you'll get everybody saying, oh, well, now you're trying to like force it down our throats. You know, th there's that argument to be oh, made yeah. as well. Mr. Fulton. Um, so uh, you know, with, with respect to that, the school budget and, and um, you know, what we can do and or could do better in the meetings, I mean, Part of what, honestly, I was trying to do because I mean, you've been on the school committee. You know, if you get in, if you start down that road into the budget, it's it's actually very complex. And, and how much the budget is going up in a given year 
in one year is not as simple as what's going on in that year. And, and, and that was part of the point I was trying to make, was, which I did say in the meeting, our enrollment of Sunderland residents in the last four years has gone up by 40%. Our budget, including this year, has gone up by 20%. So this is not some extravagant increase in the school budget that we're asking for. This is just to have an appropriate education with enough bodies to carry it out. And that's what has been driving that why our budget went up 10% last year and whatever 6% was what we were looking for this year. Um, it's really that simple and, and a story. We're educating more kids. We've been keeping down how much we've been asking from the town by using school choice money to an extent which we can't, and you know how this goes. So we've, we've spent it to the surplus, spent it to the surplus, we're at that point where we can't do it like that anymore and we actually have to back out of it and leave more in. I mean, we're, over, we're spending more than we take in in a given year. So, and we can't, you know, we're, we're at the limit. And so we have, you know, discussions with the finance committee and the select board and in our meetings about the fact that we need to reverse that by about 175 to $100,000. So not, you know, and we did part, and, and we did some of that this year and we know there's more of that coming next year. And that's, I think, part of what led to looking at, look, there's a structural deficit and it's not getting better next year. I mean, you know from the school, which is a big chunk of the budget, it's, you know, before we even get started with anything else, just the shift in school choice is 4% or 3-something percent. So let's try to get that over. But it's not, a, I mean, it's not, you know, yes, we had 4 point something more FTEs this year. You know, I could try to, you know, but, all the ways that the budget shifted from last year to this year, but really what it comes down to is a really simple story of we're educating more kids, a lot more kids, and it costs more money to do that. And the rainy day funds for, for trying to stave off how much that hits the town are done. So either we you know, find a way to, to, to increase the amount of money that we can you know, to cover that budget, um, or the school gets cut, and 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 we don't, you know, we've been down that road. It's not a pretty road. Um, it winds up hitting the town doubly because then families choice out, and that winds up not going on the school budget, but the town budget. Um, another thing, you know, some more cuts have to happen. Um, and so, I mean, I honestly have intentionally tried to keep the story really simple because it is that simple. I mean, you can get into lots of complexities of the school budget, and again, I think Tom's right. You know, I think that's. I mean, we, you know, spend hours and hours going through the, the details of the budget. We, it's, it's town meeting isn't really an appropriate place to do that. I hear you know, there's maybe ways we could present it better to get, give people a little bit clearer sense of, of but, but I, to me, I couldn't think of a better way to present it than with 40% more kids than four years ago. And it costs more money to do that. And we're asking for a 6.5% increase this year, 6% increase, of, I don't know what it was. Uh, exactly, but so so that's you know about that. If there's if there's some other way to communicate that that would be helpful, I'm all for doing it. I'd love to, to help that, that happen. Um, you know, with regard to the um, moving forward, um, you know, my my hope is that um, because we I believe are in a position have some more flexibility this year because of the you know as the one-time kind of windfallish situation in, in free cash that we don't try to make significant cuts this year to the extent that we can avoid it. I mean, which was specifically why when I was sitting in, the, in a meeting before uh, here, that I thought it was a good idea to go for the override this year because if it fails uh, and cuts, and we're gonna have to make structural cuts in budgets that we have some time um, to 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 really work that out and 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 not do that in our you know in a short time frame because that goes even worse and that also gives less time to try to keep families in the school and not having them choice out versus getting them involved and be part of the solution trying to keep them, keep them in um, and so on so I, you know I I would um, ask that as we you know, look towards what's going to be go on the, that special for that special town meeting that that um, be kept in mind, and, I, and I, that certainly applies to how I feel about the school budget. I would imagine most of the town 
offices and departments feel similarly. Um, uh, that, you know, it, to the extent possible, yeah, if, if, if changes are gonna have to be made, they're gonna have to be made, but if we, could, if we have a year to do that versus you know, a few weeks or whatever, that makes a difference. Scott? If I could, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Doug, to your, to your point about this year versus next year versus any, any given year, I think mm -hmm. Bruce has laid out pretty clearly that from 1993 there was a fail, 2009 there was a fail, 2017. 93, no, 93 passed. Oh, sorry. Okay, so a, a decade passes, nearly a decade, in that case, 20 something plus years. Um, we, we, were, we have, and I, I strive, we collectively strive to simply put just the facts out there. Orders of magnitude, they're a little squishy, with state aid and et cetera, et cetera. But you know, we're pretty, we're pretty clear about our revenue estimates and we have a really good track record of hitting our revenue estimates and being a little conservative, but that allows for some free cash generation. We get that. This particular year, we're very clear that you know the three hundred thousand dollar problem was uh, the culmination of multi year. We budget annually; it's a cash based accounting system. Yeah. But we know, with just in the elementary school growth, in our organic expense growth, and general government spent about forty eight thousand dollars. If if you take that difference between, and it was it was actually Richard the back row talked about that percentages, and they escalate, they they, they accordion out. You know, we know that we're starting next year. In theory, we know we're starting next year, starting with a hole that we're trying to fill this year, and we're going to be adding to the you know one more shovel scoop to the bottom of the next level of the hole next year. And the question about scale came up in our discussions about the override. What value do you choose? If we chose a hundred thousand, would be better. I have no interest in playing that second guessing game. People show up to vote no because they show up to vote no. I get it. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Good for them. Love it. That said, the scale is going to be the same next year, if not exacerbated, just a little bit more. So I don't know if a year's worth of glad handing and hoping to turn some people's uh, some people's opinion around has any value in it. I, that, actually, that's not. I mean, I would love to see it uh, another vote next year for, yeah. for uh, or, or whenever. But yeah. but um, but that is, actually isn't my point about the timing. It's more mm -hmm. just. Um, oh, you, you need a response time, I get it, for, for, for reductions. But yeah. yeah. And, well, we, and, we need a response time as well. And I think, right, and I, I know that. Yeah. And, um, and I think both the response time and reductions, and I think mm -hmm. um, if they, you know, especially with the school, it might be different for other county departments. I think that um, community involvement matters a lot. Agreed. Um, so having time yeah. to, to build that community involvement mm -hmm. so that it can be less impactful right. and have less people leaving and so on yep. it is huge. So agree. That's, that's where I'm coming from. Completely agree. Patty? Um, the one thing I just want to clarify, when we talked about the large increase that the school received for FY17, that went back to not meeting the required net school spending. Yeah. We had failed to meet it in FY16. And what our budget request was for FY17, when we were notified, also failed to meet net school spending. Because the charter of choice tuition that the town was paying out was decreasing, but that counts towards net school spending. So as the charter of choice kids started coming back and upped our population, it decreased the expenditures for total expenditure for net school spending. And so we had to pop it back up. So I mean, that was, that was out of our control. If we, take that risk and not meet net school spending that's set by the state, then we risk losing our chapter seven. Sure. Right. That's, that's true. That's a formula. I mean, that's true issue. that we, did, we had to do that. But it's also true that I would have come in here and said, this is what we should spend this year. We need this right. increase. And again, because it's driven by how many more kids we've right. had in right. the building. We had, just in that one year, I think it was it was 15% more kids. and And so, you know, I think the net school spending shows that, as you as you said in the meeting, you know, it's not like we're throwing some kind of lavish party over there at the elementary school. You know, we operate actually on on, on a lean budget, you know, and do an incredible job with that money. Um, and compared to, to peers, you know, our, our per people spending is is relatively low. Um, so I think that point is worth making. Um, you know, for sure, but. You know, but at the same time, you know, it's just it's going up because we got we're, we're 
we, we're educating more kids, so are we going to pay for that? You know, it, it, the town, you know, the way financing of schools works is, you know, we have local control, we also have local financing. So, you know, with that, um, you know, responsibility comes that burden of, of paying for it. Um, and, you know, otherwise, you know, I, I'd like help going in and, and explaining to the kids and the families, you know, why we're going to be cutting sure. programs again. For them. For sure. Yeah, thanks. Uh, as we're reflecting, you know, let's stand back a little bit. I found that the meeting itself, the town meeting, was a downer for me. We had, we had a, it didn't click. Mm -hmm. We had things go wrong, and it compounded on things went wrong, and it, it had no energy. It was easier to say, pass, 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 let's go home, without even believing in what you were seeing there. And there was a couple of things that started to make that happen, for example. We didn't even hear from our uh, finance committee through the whole meeting. As far as I can remember, no one said anything from the We didn't even know where they stand. Well, Bruce there said was, second a couple of times. I don't know if Move the question We once. did vote on out of the articles, but that did not appear on the mm -hmm. handout. No one knew what they said about the No, it zero. No, no. It does. It does, and it wasn't there. It's a big mess. For me, mm -hmm. what the other people that are on committee say and want to do is important. It tells me what we're trying to do and what works and what doesn't work. So that element of having the document there and finding out what your committees each want to say about it mm -hmm. is an important part of the process, right? And we lost that. You guys in the, uh, I think the school side, you didn't make the case. As far as I'm concerned, you just didn't make the case. And on top of that, you didn't zero in on people besides your own to get to sign up. The way to get over the number is not to just have school people work in their butts off and talk about it, but have the people that don't have kids in the school that want to support the school system. And I wonder how many people you had. Well, I, I don't disagree with it. At the same time, it's as we've often said, I mean, we did, this override wasn't for the school. It didn't say override for the school. <laughs> it's for the town. I mean, uh, I, I would hope I it's true. I, so right, it's an overall. I know the school is a significant part of our budget, but sure. I don't go and vote just for the school. I'm voting for the fire department and, and sure. emergency sure. You well, know, services and for our highway crew and, and for, every, for the whole town. So well, I, it, it's always, you know, yeah, I, Especially being on the school committee, having kids, and 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 loving public education and what it does for for um, for people, you know, you, I care a lot about it from the the school perspective, but but I feel like it shouldn't just be on the school to I didn't mean have the turnout. Okay. Did you guys have an annual report this year? We submitted to the town. It's in the town's annual. Every year. Yeah, it's about one line. But sorry, sorry. There's no detail there. There's nothing about what you're really doing, what your issues are. So I think I'll challenge your communication in general. I mean, really put your story out there and getting people to see what, what's going on. I think it's your responsibility. I was interested in the last point I'm going to make. I'm making. I care about education. It was important to my family you know, for many years. And I, don't, I never want one of my kids in the school system that's shaving and doing things behind nothing but the best. I'm in favor. But I was agonizing, the clock was ticking, and there's one lady that was sending emails out for their committee and said, I switched 1130 and there's no one here. And she was very concerned. I'll tell you, if she didn't send me an email, I wouldn't have voted for you. But she was so compelling to me because she was concerned about her son and what we're trying to do here in the school. And she actually got, just her email got me to go. I've been in other campaigns with this things that I think get elected. You've got to have the energy, you have to have enthusiasm, and be convinced that you've got the right story. And you don't go out and see the people in their face. We have no campaigning here, so, so, no, so except one lady sending me an email at 12 o'clock. What is tricky about that is, you know, the timing of it. I mean, you know, it was, I don't know, a few weeks before the, the election that it was definitive that we had an override. Well, I mean, and it's still not definitive right until ta after town meeting. Okay. So, you know, and then it's a week later. Um, and, well, yeah, I mean, Saturday, whatever, but I have some thoughts about, but, so that's the other thing, like, to 
you know, to have a, a way, I, I hear you Tom about the like, the contentiousness of that 2009 one. I think that was particularly hot for a lot of reasons that don't have to be replicated sure. in the future. Um, but I think, um, but something that was friendly, but, but, but maybe um, had a, an awareness for the town as a whole, like, that um, this is this is you know this is on there that, you know and um, the the turnout should be more than whatever that would have been. Um, for you know for something as as fundamental as as you know something to have a big impact on the town budget. Everything said and done, we got to move forward. Yeah. The bottom line is our revenue is meeting what the cost of running the town is, well, is happening. That's see, I want to. And that's that's right. the bottom line. Uh, and I mean, and I mean, whether whether you know you got so many variables that we have no control over what the state aid is going to be, what the chapter seventy is going to be, what the chapter ninety money is going to be. We only can control what our revenues are that we derive from our town and what correct. we spend in the town. And, and in order to, I, and, and I've said this a long time ago, we should have a core set of, of like employees, a core set of things that we're going to fund with the town funding. And then start going from there of what we can afford and what we can't afford. Like the biggest expenditure we've probably had in the last couple of years has been the ambulance service. That's, that's been a big expenditure. That, that's the only new growth in, I would say, in town government and town services in probably, what, probably 10 or 15 years? Uh, so besides, you know, besides education, yes. Yeah, but, but you know, that's, that goes along with it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great service. It's a great service. It saves people's lives. And, and we got to make a decision of, of do we keep these good services, including the school, police, fire, whatever, but start cutting positions in order to stay within what we raise in the town. And well, that's the, that's the bottom line. And I go back to a point that you made, actually, and when we first started talking about the overrides, because since uh, two and a half went in in 1981, I believe, so this town has only passed one two and a half override. Now, technically, we passed two if you include the capital one, but <laughs> that was a very targeted non-general government one and also people's tax rates ended up lower even with the override end. but back to a point that you made about how um, maybe it's time for a, for a sort of a correction and you have to realize that and and that's exactly the point I'm sure you have to look at we want to afford these expenses but I think we also have to be realistic and say that you can't look at since 1981 of never making, you know, you've made the town has made one override since then. You can't realistically expect expenses to never go over that ceiling, and that's one of the things I think that has been completely distorted about two and a half. Is people have sort of got it into their heads that nothing can ever go over this amount, and that's not really the purpose of it. It's a, to put a check on it to make people stop and think about it rather than just raising things all the time. But it's unrealistic. I mean, you know, how would people sit around feel if we say, you know, you can never have a raise more than 2.5% in a year? Well, nobody would like that. I mean, put aside the fact that a lot of people don't get it. But, and it's the same thing that applies there. Flip that around. You have to expect expenses go up. How much has gas gone up in any given year? Many years, it's gone up way over 2.5%. So we have to make that decision as a town. What do we want to pay for? And that's exactly right. And, and do we value ed, things like education? These are the building blocks of America. These are the things that we pay for. The, that, what you were saying about the 2.5% a year, I, I think that one approach to that problem is that you actually go that 25 per year. I don't think we've been doing that. Another point you could make is, well, what is the average um, increase over actually, the last decade? Actually, we've been writing our levy our levy capacity for about a decade. 
Did, in, we one, have, in one year, we had less than a thousand dollars in available living capacity. So it's been two and a half for a decade. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's a good point, though. It's one of the kind of nuances that yeah. gets lost. But it, at the same time, what's happened to our our expenses? Support, have been, well, yeah. and support from other agents, agents, agents. Yeah. But but also to the point though that it, we don't necessarily we may raise that, but it doesn't mean that we actually have to spend that. And that's we weren't actually talking about spending that. We just wanted the ability. To do that if we needed to. But yeah, that's a good point. Stan? So I have a question that's not going to be popular at all with the members. A number of people. No, it's both. No, just all, right. all, all three, all three cameras. So, so, so the most, yeah. <laughs> again, the, mo the most important thing, I think Bruce said it, I'm, Bruce said it earlier before he went backwards. He said, you got to go forward. Um, and I, Right, and, and 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 you can discuss how you can discuss how and why an we override fails or pass or and passes or fails. <laughs> to me, that's right now. It doesn't matter to me. Cause, I mean, I I know why because the other the no votes had more than the yes votes. It's simple to me. Um, but, uh, but to your question, there's not there, there's not a bad there's not a there's not a there's not a bad question. Oh, thank you. Okay. Well, yeah, it's um, so all through the budget year. We've all known that all this, you know, we're going to have a shortfall for this fall and everything. Why did we spend a hundred thousand dollars out of free cash for sure. the three hundredth anniversary? Mechanically speaking, citizens petition, so it had to be placed in the warrant. And then, mechanically speaking, town meeting, not exclusively of this board, voted yes. It, now, if you if now you that's, have, that's mechanical. That, that's mechanical. that's a technical answer. Now, if you want if you want sure. my answer. I, I would tell you that the, there there was a request for citizens petition for 125. For, well, that was from the, the other all right, for 125,000. My my guess is that they, we passed 105,000 dollars for for the um, the 300 celebration. My guess is that there's there there's going to be a, a gale of ball one night. The place that's going to that's going to have it requires half the a down payment of half now I'm, I'm trying to try to explain I'm trying to answer your question okay so that gala is going to be self-sufficient it's going to cost we actually know how much it's going to cost thirteen thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars and it's going to be sixty five dollars a person to, to pay and you're gonna have a band you're gonna have the fiend at the, and it's going to be a wonderful time it's thirteen thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars divided by two. Seven. We have around have to have seven thousand dollars. Where do you get the seven thousand dollars to pay for that? So you have to you have to have money. The the parade. There's going to be there's going to be expenses in the parade. The last budget was forty forty-five thousand forty-seven thousand dollars. Now we know the committee knows. They told me that there's going to be many dollars are going to be coming in that have already been promised. That have that are coming in. People have already donated eight thousand dollars. They have already donated eight thousand dollars for that. So when it that forty seven thousand, when it's probably done, they're probably my guess is you probably gonna have at least half of that is going to be incurred, or you're going to have donations to cover that. Well, but the bands that are coming going to that they're going to want to be paid. They need deposits now. They need monies now to pay for that. So, where where are they going to get that money if they don't if they don't ask for that money from the town now? Another thing is a fireworks display. The fireworks display is going to cost a sum of money ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, whatever it is. My guess is there'll probably be someone or a group of people, a group of organizations that'll donate for that. That fireworks display is going to want half their money up front to reserve that date. Where do you get? No one asked that question. So you may see a hundred thousand dollars. For that 105,000 for the celebration, how much are they going to give back? My, Tom, yeah. maybe half of that, right? Which was said in the meeting. So, and that's why uh, you know we, we couldn't really put any facts and figures really on paper because it is still floating. But from what Buddha mentioned, that we do have uh, everything. Everyone that has submitted a proposal that we have taken and approved. They have a budget and a spreadsheet type thing as when they need the money. And Tom, you're right on target that the fireworks, no matter what, $10,000 down payment, period, to take reserve the date. Where do we get that money from? 
the bands that they want to take a line up for the parade. They've started working on this a year ago, sending out invitations, getting, you know, they have their monthly meetings, they understand the type of uh, bands of music that they want. They require a down payment to take and hold that date and that. Once again, the celebratory hall, once again, as you said, Tom, they need a down payment and, you know, to take the reserve thing. We don't have the money. You gave us the opportunity to take and start putting together a, uh, a, a, a 300 anniversary. This only comes what, once every 300 years. The last one was 50 years ago that we did. So pretty much, you know, the townspeople stood up and said, this is what we want to take and see. This is what we want. From two consecutive meetings, the, the, theory, the, uh, the theme was the same. We're trying to take, put together a, a, an event to honor the, the veterans. We have $1,000 budgeted for that. Can we do this? We hope so. But, you know, we also have a little fudge factor to pull this. But, you know, we're going to be counting on a lot of donations. We're going to be counting on these people to take and step up and donate their time and talents to take and play in some of these events. The other thing is the fact that what Brenda mentioned also is the fact that this three-day celebration in June, June 15, 16, 17, We've got a great deal on a tent. We're going to have it set up. We've got the infrastructure set up so that we're going to have the tent, the tables, the chairs, the standing cans, the dance floor, the sound system, or whatever like this. We're going to use it for one night. We're going to have it now. We're going to for three nights, four nights, or whatever. We're opening it up for the town. Some organization wants to come in Saturday, Friday night. Please do. If the elementary school wants to take and put on a performance, please do. This infrastructure is going to be here. We've got to pay for it once for that weekend for them to set it up. So let's make it open up. For, and that's part of the parade uh, organization. That's, you know, for their, for their weekend. So pretty much we're in the, I'm talking with other people now about Sunday, uh, uh, Sunday festivities. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will be keeping busy. We're going to have money going out, but we're also going to have money coming back in. So, so if you ask me why I supported why I supported the hundred thousand, because I know most of it's coming. I'm not going to say most of it. I'm going to say I, I'm going to say right now, I know probably fifty percent will come back, and 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 I also think there's a di there's a difference between the cel celebration three hundred and our budget. The celebration is a one time expenditure that's going to be placed on it. The town's going to pay one time. Our budget, and I want, I want to say something, and it's going to sound mighty simple, but when I, went, when I went to Frontier, I learned math. I learned math pretty well. Sometimes somebody said I learned English pretty well, too, because I don't say good. I say, well, that's another story. But to me, when I look at the budget, the budget's pretty straightforward, and it is just math. We can see, we know how much money's coming in every year. We know what our levy, what, our le what we talk about our levy capacity. We know what we have for levy capacity. We also know that we probably, on average, are two and a half increases, approximately 125 to 140,000. We have approximately 20 to $30,000 new growth. So when the, when the school, and, and again, I'm not picking on the school, please understand, I'm, I'm, but we, we understand if the school budget comes in and it's at $150,000 an increase, kind of like two years in a row on average, we know that's unsustainable with our other cost. That, to me, it was about math. And, and that's how I could separate the, the 300 from our budget. The only thing that 300 would have does will do is if you take the 50% of that budget, $50,000 $50, away from the 300th, if we can do it, is you just you, you just make the pain less painful for one year. But sure. it just comes back and hurts us next year. Twice as much. And, and, and see, Bruce understands, and, and I, would, I would agree with Bruce. Now, people don't agree with my math, but I, but I think, I, I will say I will agree with Bruce. It does come back and hurt you twice as much twice as much. You're taking it from your savings account. You're using right. your current expenses. Well, the next year, your savings account is less, 
but your current expenses is double what it is before. And see, I agree with that. And, and that's why... Yeah, it catches up to you. Right. So, so no matter what, on our, on our, on our funds, our, that our, our free cash, stabilization, whatever, we could, we could have a million dollars in there, and, and we're, we're able to extend out until our, our zero hour, but the zero hour will come. It is not this year. It's going to be next year, not next year, the next the year after. But it is math, and that's that's why stand at that. I thought the the three hundred was a good thing because I, I I do think no matter we have our questions about the funding of our programs, our town does a lot of great things, and and just we just had the uh, the the energy committee was in here just a short time ago about uh, going out door-to-door -door surveys, what, a thousand surveys or 600 amazing things yeah, coming back. Surveys, yeah. um, and we do a lot of, we do a lot of, the town does a lot of good things. The CPA, you look at some of the things, you, Richard, Richard, the, the chair of the CPA, and he can talk about some pro, uh, programs that the CPA, when they first heard about the, the thing when they brought to us, it was like, how in the world are they going to make that happen? And then when they do it, it's like, oh my God, look at what, Look at what those people did. So that's why I, I thought the. I, I, that's how I could separate the two. But it's a very good point. Your point is very well taken. People did that ask ask that question, or have asked that question. But in, in the short term, when these problems, uh, financial problems, come up, the focus tends to be on the spending. But actually, a lot of the problem is resulting of the fact that it's mostly a res residential town sure. and we have growth mm -hmm. residential properties small right. and have increases in spending which come, which are always greater than the contributions from those from those families mm -hmm. and what you really need is to have growth in in commercial properties and businesses absolutely right. and so i'm sure and i'm not like tied in it as as i probably ought to be to what's going on in that aspect but i think there is work going on in trying to Agreed. We'll have a plan for, for commercial development in the town, but I think the sooner we can make that happen and focus on some of those long-term things, the better. Yeah. I, I think if you look at commercial development in Sunderland, the amount of commercial development you'd have to have to, to sustain, you know, the growth in the income coming in would just be astronomical and probably would do away with three-quarters of the residential area. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it's, it, it, if you look at the zoning maps, you know, you got residential houses, you have APR. Okay. In, in, the, in the woodland, there is not much commercial buildable space left in some of them. So then your choice is either raise taxes yep. or cut things to the, so that no one wants to live here. <laughs> right, and there's your dilemma. Yeah, that's, um, that's well, actually, that's if I could, does anybody have any more new ground that they'd like to cover tonight? <laughs> well, I, I, actually, that's a that's an interesting point yeah. to leave on. Mm -hmm. But, Stana, did you have any? Yeah. Thank you for your questions tonight. I, I hope um, I hope we started a dialogue. I hope your questions started a dialogue. Thank you. So, so, um, I mean, we're going to be talking about this for the next the next few weeks. Um, I mean, so. Patty, you're going to have to talk to to share. You guys can sit down. You can start. That that's and and again, that's a very critical component. Is is our business, school business manager and superintendent sitting down with the town administrator, and start you know talking. See We're see. Not getting your marching orders tonight. No, not tonight. I I don't think so. I I. Th um, Got some homework to do, but homework, and we, we're we're going to want to talk to the finance committee, see where they want to go, and and how they want to go forward, because uh, Richard, co contrary to what may have been, and, and and the board of selectmen did apologize for that uh, information that was that that was a stunner to us, um, and tr and trust me, we, no one was more more disappointed than us, and because we work we we try to work very hard on making sure, and 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 we failed, we we. we Aren't, aren't afraid to say it, um, and and but you're right, and and no, it, it hurt you, but it hurt us more because we knew, and and we were right. I mean, we were talking about it as it was going on. So, thankfully, it was nine copies, not three hundred. 
So, so anyways, uh, we will continue. We'll be with you in one second, okay? But so I'm, if it's okay, I'm going to end tonight's public comment, um, and we'll start talking with the finance committee. Tommy, you had anything to say? You all set? Thank you, Tommy. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, Sean, where do you want to go now? Yeah, I was just going to encourage everybody to get involved in local government. And we have meetings in the public, no one comes, so get involved. It, it, is, it is important. I, I, I do think sometimes it's, it's easier to ask a question at the uh, school committee meeting than the town meeting floor. Sometimes it's... Is, some, yeah. some, sometimes you, may, you can ask a question that you may not, we, may, we may not have an answer for. We try. But sometimes we can be stumped. Um, and you have to go and, back and, and get not, some information. And we have to get that information. But yep. so our, our uh, so what what we have just so so you guys know um, the the date of the, the special town meeting is June sixteenth. It's a Friday night, June sixteenth, uh, seven seven p.m. at the elementary school. All articles are due. Um, by so we have to open we have to open the warrant right mm -hmm. do we want to open the warrant tonight yeah move so to, move to open the warrant for the special town meeting dated 6 16 7 p.m the elementary school second okay so we have a motion made and seconded to open the warrant for the special town meeting all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. okay the warrant's open um articles are due by monday may 15th 2017 uh we have the selectmen need to sign the warrant on Monday, May 22nd. Warrant to be posted on June the 2nd, 2017. The last day to register to vote for that town meeting will be Tuesday, June 6th, 2017. So those are those are our big dates. The budget has to be finalized by the 15th of May. No. Yeah, that so that's that's for the article. We we right, put we the, have the article in a motion is the amount. We'll we'll have the we'll have the article we'll have the art the most um, article will be realistically, the realistically that should be all the time on the warrant. I, I, I would say yeah. if I would if I was to add one thing, I would say we should try to have the budget we should be pretty much finalized with the budget by the end of May. But but, but that should be the only no, yeah. there'll be one spending article request for the highway department for a fuel dispensing system out of capital okay. stabilization. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and there might be a citizen's petition about rescinding Article 12. Yeah, but they need 200 they need a whole bunch more citizens. Uh, I'm just uh, suggesting that it's possible. Yeah. For what? Rescinding Article 12. Yeah, yeah. Again, we can't stop a citizen's petition. No, but it has to be it's a lot more uh, signatures, 200 signatures, I think. Totally get it. Mm -hmm. Or well, if get they get it, who knows? Technical. It's a significant. Hundred signatures. Yeah, it's a significant amount. Of hundred signatures get you on the next special. Hundred signatures get you on the next town meeting or special. Two hundred, you you have to call. Ten ten get because it's. Ten ten get the next annual town meeting. So ten will get you on the annual. Hundred get you on the next special. 200 calls can call a special yeah okay i think um so how how did you how did you guys want to move forward with the budget how to talk about that you do you want to have a meeting where we talk about the philosophy of what we're going to do we can do that we're meeting next tuesday on the 16th as a finance committee to okay talk about some of that stuff all right we'll, i know that everybody's watching tonight We'll, we'll, we'll be meeting next week and we'll discuss philosophy yeah. and where yeah, we want to go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. And we'll let you guys know Perfect. what we're thinking. And, and, and then we, then you guys discuss it and maybe then we'll be together on the 23rd. 22nd is our next. It goes 15 and 22. Then you're going to So you're going to have it. Your, your next Tuesday is the 17th. 16th. 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 16th is a Monday. No, nope, you're looking at no, Tuesday. The yeah. Right. So you meet on the 16th. Yeah. We do Tuesday. philosophy Monday. Monday. Yeah. You guys meet, and then Tuesday, okay. the 22nd. Monday. So I took this. All right. So then we'll talk about it, and we'll have a we'll have a we'll have a um, proposed. Okay. Number. Okay. I, but I agree with you, Bruce. I I don't disagree with anything you said. I. I I think it's 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 hard to vote. Yes or no, 
um, but information is key. Um, and, and I don't know how to get more people to listen to it. You got to look at the income. And the, you know, from past experience, the state aid's what gets the problem. We stay within our own money. They used to get more state aid one year. They say, oh, he's got some more money. We do this, we do that. And then all of a sudden, the economy, like 2008, 2009, the economy just went, oh. Well, that's and, it. And, and, and everybody was in the same boat because right. they were losing their investments, they were losing their jobs, and everything. And I mean, that vote stirred a lot of interest in town. I mean, when you look at the numbers that that, I mean, it might have been, you know, very. That stirred some glee in it, people, it, too. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it stirred a lot of people. And there's a lot of people in town that can't afford an increase in it. Uh, we we know. People. Sure. And, and you got to. You got to emphasize with them too. And how do you how do you help those people out? But well, that's not unique to us. That's something in every single time absolutely, you have that. There's absolutely, always you know, absolutely. and that's a it's a societal problem that you've got people that you know you live in. Let's say you live there all your life. Yep. You put your kids through school. Oh sure, you know, and you can take tax rise, raises and everything. But then you hit a certain point in your life where you have fixed income. Yep. And, yeah. bucks, bucks right, you know, right. or whatever it is. And, yep. Okay. It's an Any, endemic uh, problem everywhere. Right. All set? Good. Any question? No. Any, any other comments? Right. What, uh, just question, like when, uh, um, can I, you know, how can I be? <laughs> well, Sherry, Sherry, Sherry will be talking. Sherry will be talking to uh, the superintendent and business manager tomorrow. Um, we, we, um, I, I think Sherry, Sherry has a, probably a number in the top of her head that she wants to talk to talk to them about. See if it's obtainable. Because um, we, we, we have, we had a number. Um, going forward mm -hmm. that we thought so like I said we know we had that 18,000 in the, the health care we we had some some other things and we can't there's a lot of things that we can't touch you know I mean we're not and that some I I, I, find, I find that strange sometimes because people say well, you guys don't know how to say no and it's like <laughs> in, in my history when people come and say um, well why don't you try whatever pick a pick a thing and say we've already done that and they go well why don't you try this mm -hmm. we've done that too um and and i think that's I, that's why I, I like people that come and participate because then they will find you know we're we're trying um we're trying just, to make it affordable so. not just these yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've been yeah. i've been out in the finance committee for over 10 years now and almost every year we tell the department heads Zero percent increase. I'd be hard pressed to think of a year when we said, sure, go for it. Never. <laughs> exactly. It's either not right. great Give or really bad. Give us a level budget, yep. I think yep. every year is like this. Well, that's it. And we're not talking about adding anything. Mm -hmm. This is just treading water. Yeah, that's all it is. And even then, when you look at the bottom line, it's not that much. You no, know. you're replacing one with the other, but it is an increase. It's a new program. It's a very yeah. successful program when you look at how it's how it's how it's run and everything. And right. The yeah. so there's, a, there's a date for. You said, I'm sorry. June 16th will be a special town meeting. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Anything else, Sherry? No. Uh, All right. Any other? Anything else? Motion to adjourn. All right. Motion. Second. Yeah. Motion made. Second to adjourn. All those in favor. Uh, hi. Uh, Sherry, declare us out at uh, 8 o'clock.